Hello everyone. Welcome to Radiology Everywhere YouTube channel. Today we are going to talk about vascular lesions of the orbit. In this video, I will discuss about cavernous hemangioma, capillary hemangioma, varix, venous lymphatic malformation, arteriovenous malformation and carotid cavernous fistula. In considering the cavernous hemangioma, this is the most common primary orbital tumor in adults and it represents 6% of all orbital masses. Cavernous hemangioma is an angiographically silent venous malformation consisting of endothelial line vascular spaces with a fibrous pseudocapsule and usually it is centered on the intracoronal compartment and it may contain fibrolytes on imaging. Even though frank hemorrhage is atypical, but hemosiderin staining may occur and rarely cavernous hemangioma can be intraosseous and therefore it can be extraconal. And when considering the clinical presentation of cavernous hemangioma, you can see the painless slowly progressive proptosis and diplopia and, and you can see the increased growth may occur in pregnancy or following trauma. On MRI, cavernous hemangioma shows low T1 signal and high T2 signal with variable enhancement and progressive spread of enhancement from a single point or a small component of the mass on dynamic post gadolinum MRI. This is similar to progressive filling in of cavernous hemangioma in the liver. And when considering the management, a conservative approach and monitoring may be favored over the surgical resection. The next one is capillary hemangioma. This is a different entity of vascular malformation. Capillary hemangioma presents in the pediatric population soon after birth and you can see a rapid growth during the first year of life with often subsequent involution approximately by the age of 10 years and capillary hemangioma you can see an association with cutaneous facial malformation and most commonly capillary hemangioma is most commonly found in the extra coronal compartment anteriorly and within the superior medial orbital quadrant sometimes the irregularity of the mass and spread to the intracoronal compartment can mimic malignancy on MRI, titubated imaging, low signal flow voids can be a helpful differentiating feature. And retinal hemangioblastoma, it is also called as retinal capillary hemangioma, which occurs in association with von Hippel-Lindau disease and familial cancer syndrome. Now we are going to talk about varix. This is an abnormally dilated vein or cluster of veins and varies can occur at any age but are most common in the second and third decade with no gender predilection. The hallmark of an orbital varix is enlargement under pressure resulting in a sometimes dramatic proptosis especially during valsalva maneuver or when the patient bends forward. And varices may not always be evident on standard supine cross-sectional imaging so therefore may require a provocation maneuver during the imaging to visualize the varix. On CT, you can see the increased attenuation due to blood products, calcified fibrolytes are pathognomonic. On MRI, titubated MRI shows flow voids but these can be absent especially if there is a variceal thrombosis and hemorrhage is a potential complication and may result in acute painful proptosis. The next vascular lesion of the orbit is venous lymphatic malformation. Sometimes this referred as lymphangioma but it does not represent a neoplasm and venous lymphatic malformation may manifest at birth or in early childhood and typically they demonstrate slow growth but no growth at all. On clinical presentation you can see proptosis, restriction of ocular movements and occasional hemorrhages. Unlike a varix, a venous lymphatic malformation does not enlarge under valsalva type stress maneuvers. And on MRI, it is the most sensitive method of characterizing the venous lymphatic malformation and may show proteinaceous and hemorrhagic components with fluid fluid levels and typically enhanced poorly. When considering AV malformation or arteriovenous malformation, these are purely involving AVM of the orbita, extremely rare. So, result in visible key 20 stigmata due to congestive changes within the periorbital soft tissue and the orbit and 
it may also involve the bony orbit and you can see the arterial supply of this avm is typically from anterior ethmoidal rami of ophthalmic artery or internal or external maxillary arteries when these avms uh, involve the retina and midbrain the terms congenital unilateral retinocephalic vascular malformation syndrome or the bonnet duchenne blank syndrome or weber mason syndrome describe a neurocutaneous syndrome characterized by these avms and the last vascular lesion of the orbit is keratococavernous fistula this is an abnormal direct or indirect connection between one or more branches of internal or external carotid artery and the cavernous sinus they can occur spontaneously and most infrequently in the context of a collagen vascular disease but the carotid cavernous fistula is commonly due to the result of trauma surgery previous thrombosis or aneurysm rupture and you can see middle aged to elderly women are more frequently affected by this uh, ccf the clinical findings may be pulsatile exophthalmos and conjunctival injection and oscillatory bruit on imaging you can see dilatation of superior ophthalmic vein proptosis and the fullness of cavernous sinus and extraocular muscle congestions ultrasound may be useful to demonstrate reversed arterialized flow in the superior ophthalmic veins so today we discuss about the vascularization of the orbits including cavernous hemangioma capillary hemangioma varix venous lymphatic malformation av malformation and keratococcus cavernous fistula if you like the video you can like it comment and share among your friends and if you are not subscribed yet you can subscribe the channel radiology everywhere and we will see you soon with a new video thank you bye bye